Hi guys, it is March 31st, so the last day of the first quarter of the year, and I thought that this would be a great time to film a book haul, because after all, I haven't filmed a haul since my holiday haul, which I filmed on the 6th of January. So this is going to include all the books that I bought since then, minus the ones that I've already read, and that includes the books that I read in March, because I'm going to talk about them soon anyway, so there's no need to talk about them here as well. I've bought some very interesting books this quarter. Some of them are books that have been on my list for ages, and others are complete impulse buys. Let's start with a whole batch of those impulse books first, because they all come from the same source. So sometime in February, if I remember correctly, I went to a big book market that takes place every year in a small community near Munich. And the books that I bought there are all from the foreign language section because the German section was just too large and also much too crowded. So I went straight to the... English, Spanish and French part of the market hall. And what I got there was The Conservationist by Nadine Gordimer. This takes place in South Africa and it is a, about a rich white landowner. I'm not sure if he is English or Dutch. I'm not sure um, about the time that this is set in. Anyhow, it seems to be about both race relations and the conditions in general in farming communities in rural South Africa. And it sounds a bit similar to The Grass is Singing by Doris Lessing, which I read last year and really, really enjoyed. It was so great in the way that it took a very personal look at some very big and broad social and societal issues. And I expect this book to do more of the same. So I bought this hoping that it would be more of the same, which I read in The Grass is Singing by Doris Lessing. Another book I got there is The Comedy of Errors by Shakespeare. Now, I'm not particularly interested in The Comedy of Errors, although, generally speaking, I'm more interested in Shakespeare's comedies than in his tragedies. and especially in his histories, um, but I'm not particularly interested in the Comedy of Errors. However, I love these Oxford World Classics editions of Shakespeare with their extensive introductions and commentaries and line commentaries. So for one euro, I just couldn't pass this by. The same goes for my next book, which is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I am, to be honest, I am not at all interested in Murakami and Norwegian Wood is actually the only novel of his that I would even consider reading. But again, for one euro, I thought maybe I should give this a try. For one euro, there isn't really any excuse to not at least give this a chance. Another great find from the market, which I'm very happy about, is this little collection of poems by Rimbaud. It seems to be a bind-up of three collections, um, the collections being Dernier Vert, Une Saison en Enfer, and Illumination. And it contains a short biography and introductions into each of the three collections. I don't think I've ever actually read any poems by Rombo, except maybe two or three in a short biography that I once read. So I'm very happy um, to be able to read more by him and also to be able to read, to, to continue my French poetry journey, which last year was very successful with Les Fleurs du Mal by Baudelaire. And finally, my last book from this market hall is a non-fiction book. It's the one, the only, Freakonomics, <laughs> with this hilarious cover image, or images, rather, I guess. 
To be honest, I only bought this because of its cult status. I'm, at this point, I don't expect my mind to be blown by it. Ex I expect to already be familiar with some of the shocking <laughs> revelations in this book, at least familiar in, in general terms, if not with the specific examples that they come up with in the book. But you hear so much about it, and again, for one euro, why not? And with that, we have moved into the non-fiction category of today's book haul. The next three books are all also used non-fiction, but they are books that I had been looking for specifically and had wanted to read for some time. The first one is by an author of whom I mean to read much more from in the future. It's Gulag by Anne Applebaum. I mean to read or to start reading Gulag the minute I finish Solzhenitsyn's The Gulag Archipelago. This one was written after Russia made public, or at least accessible to researchers, the archives which contained the administrative documentation of the gulags. And what an Applebaum found is that the documents in those archives corroborate the reports made by Solzhenitsyn and his sources and not only corroborated them, but if anything, they showed that Solzhenitsyn had underestimated maybe not the vastness of the Gulag machine, but how integral it was to Soviet infrastructure and especially the infrastructure of Soviet economy. So this is certainly going to be a fascinating read. Another one is a book that I am really a bit ashamed to say I still haven't read. It's a fameless and, as it turns out, timeless essay of cultural criticism. It is Das Kunstwerk im Zeitalter seiner technischen Reproduzierbarkeit, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction by Walter Benjamin. We are, after all, today, I guess, in the age of mechanical reproduction on steroids. So it's going to be, I think, pretty sobering to see how much of what is true in this essay has become even truer and even more exacerbated since 1935 or sometime in the late 19... I think oh, I, I actually made a note. This is the text, the version of the text that that was finalized in 1939. I meant to read this this month in March, um, didn't get to it, didn't really feel like it, so this is definitely on my TBR for April. My next book is another German one, and I don't think that this one has been translated into English. It is very specific to our region. It is a book about how the Alps, the mountains, influence our weather. Since I moved to Munich, I noticed some very dramatic differences in the weather compared to where I used to live in Cologne. And of course, it's obvious that the Alps are the reason for this dramatic difference. For instance, thunderstorms are much more interesting here. Um, and I saw this book actually when I last went into a normal, non-used bookshop to just browse the shelves um, at the beginning of January and I've wanted to read it ever since and now have a copy and have actually started reading it and the um, the author you know, on the cover is, his writing style is very charming and it is a very entertaining read. Now, my next category is new books, but only one of the books in this category is actually a brand new publication. And it is not this first one, as anybody from the German-speaking region will instantly recognize, because the publisher who publishes books in this format, Reklam being the name of the publisher, publishes 
the publisher publishes publications <laughs> um, of from world literature, classics from world literature, which are read in schools and universities. And this one is Cornbeat by Voltaire. I only recently realized that this was an extremely short classic. It is just exactly 150 pages in this edition. Now, and this is a tiny book. I have very small hands. and. But there is a lot of text on each page. The font is very small. That's always the case with the reclam books. However, in this instance, there are a lot of vocabulary notes at the end of each page. So it's not even that each page is full of text in this tiny book. So 150 pages, even in this edition, is really a short book. So. If you are on the lookout for a short classic as well, maybe even specifically a French short classic, Condit by Voltaire is your next read. My next book is the next novel by Patricia A. MacKillop that I'm going to read. It is The Book of Ettrick's Wolf. Now, if I understand or if I remember the description correctly, Ettrick's Wolf is a wizard who made a grave mistake once. A spell of his went wrong and it killed a person that was near and dear to him or near and dear to somebody who was near and dear to him. He has been lying low ever since, but now there is a chance for redemption opening up. That is what I gather from the description. However, it is always the possibility with books by Patricia A. MacKillop that the story will take a completely surprising turn. And it's not only the stories by Patricia A. MacKillop that are so surprising, it is also her writing style. Her style is very lush and on the one hand it is a bit quaint, but on the other hand almost every other sentence that she writes take it takes a turn for the unexpected, at least to me. But it never feels forced. It always feels organic and authentic. It's just the way she writes, just the way she thinks, and I absolutely love it. And my last book from this category is the brand new publication. It came out earlier this year. It is Martyr! Exclamation mark by Kave Akbar. I read the synopsis of this and it sounded hilarious and absolutely completely interesting. So I went and bought it but then had some misgivings because while this is a debut novel, the author is an established poet in the literature community in New York City. And to be honest, if you encounter high praise for a book from that scene, from every reviewer, from every each and every side, that's not really anything to go by, I have learned the hard way, because this is a community that takes care of its own, if you know what I mean. I really hope that this isn't one of those books. I'll read you a little bit from the blurb. It says, Cyrus Shems, the novel's hero, is a young man grappling with an inheritance of violence and loss. A mother whose plane was shot down over the skies of the Persian Gulf in a senseless accident and a father whose life in America was circumscribed by killing chickens on a factory farm in the Mideast. Cyrus is a drunk, an addict, and a poet whose obsession with martyrs leads him into the mysteries of his past. And then at the end, Martyr is a work of gut-wrenching anguish and exquisite consolation, a book that sees into every corner of the human heart, that faces down shame and despair, and emerges with a vision of humanity that is capacious and full of grace. An astonishing debut. And I really hope that it is as grand in scope as this last paragraph makes it sound. Because I have found that books that are books from this community, um, not just in New York City, but all over the English-speaking world, 
not just the English speaking world really, books that are supposed to be about these grand themes and are supposed to carry some profound insight and profound truth about humanity are really just full of banality and don't offer any new insight at all whatsoever. And I really hope that this is an outlier. I really hope that I won't regret giving it a chance. At least it wasn't as expensive as it looks. My next and last category is the most exciting one for me, at least, in this book haul. It contains both new and used books, but they are all from one and the same author. They are all novels by Claire North. I read my first book by Claire North in January, Notes from the Burning Age, and I think it is absolutely going to end up on my favorite books of the year list. And basically, I want to read everything that Claire North has written now. Actually, one of the books in this deck I already had before the beginning of this year. It's Touch, which is a book about somebody who can body switch. I don't know if he can do it at will or just if and when he is being killed. And so it is a speculative kind of fantasy book which then turns into a murder mystery thriller when he sets out to avenge the murder of one of his host bodies. The next book I have actually just started, I'm on page 24, it is the end of the day and this is the story of Charlie who is human but he has taken on the job of harbinger of death. I'm not exactly sure how this works because as far as I know he doesn't have any colleagues. He is the harbinger of death. So um, you, you should think that this would keep him busier than is possible. But I, I have learned next to nothing about his work conditions yet. So it could be that he is only sent out as harbinger in, in certain cases when certain people are dying. Who knows? Um, in any case, I think um, what is going to go down is that Death and the other three horsemen of the apocalypse are actually set to ride out and the apocalypse is happening just when Charlie has taken on this job. Oh, brother. Um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure yet what the tone of this book is going to be. It's very interesting so far. But one that is definitely serious in tone is 84K, which is a sadly plausible dystopia in which people are able to buy themselves free from the crimes they've committed specifically or including murders they've committed. And people are acquitted of crimes, of murders, even as long as they can pay the fine. And the fine is whatever the person who was killed is deemed to have been worth. In this case, it's a person that is deemed worth 84k and the person is the ex-wife, I think, of the protagonist of the story who works. I don't know if he determines or if he just chronicles the worth of the killed persons. This sounds absolutely bone chilling. I have no idea actually what the story is going to be, This what I've just told you about it is after all only the setting and and the the concept for the world of this book. I don't know what the story is going to be, but it sounds great, I think. Then we have The First 15 Lives of Harry August, which I don't have to tell you much about, I don't think. Um, this is her most famous book to date, but it's also the one I'm least interested in um, at the moment at least. 
just because it is so famous. So I think reading and talking about her other books might be more worthwhile. Um, then we have The Sudden Appearance of Hope, which is about a girl or a young woman whom everybody keeps forgetting. Nobody ever remembers meeting her. Even her own family has forgotten her. Sounds a bit reminiscent of, I forget the title, Adila Wu by V. E. Schwab. Um, but this one has the definite advantage of not having been written by V. E. Schwab. And finally, we have The Pursuit of William Abbey, which is set in the late 19th century, or at least that is when it starts, when the story starts. And it is about a young English doctor who acquires a curse when he is working in South Africa, and the curse then pursues him wherever he goes. And it sounds like it is something that can be utilized or abused um, for certain nefarious ends, it says in the blurb. But to those in power, William's curse might be a blessing. And as the world slides towards war, the First World War, I assume, William must decide what he is willing to sacrifice in order to survive. So sounds quite big as far as the theme and its implications are concerned. So these are all the books that I bought in the first quarter of the year and haven't read yet. I've been quite good recently with reading books soon after I buy them, but still quite the stack. If you think that I should prioritize a specific one of the books that I showed you in this haul, then do tell me so in the comments or tell me what you thought about the books from this haul that you have read. I'll see you again very soon, guys, with my next video. Bye!